Back to the phone lines, JT, listening in Hartford, Connecticut, Sirius XM 131. Hi, JT. Hi, um, Hank. Um, <clears throat> I've been a Christian a while, um, but, uh, you know, Matthew 7, uh, where Jesus said, not everybody who calls me Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom. It, it's a very terrifying passage to me. Um, and I, <clears throat> I'd i like to know... Um, he, the ones that will enter the kingdom are, are the ones that do the will of my father. Uh, the ones who, who don't are, I, they seem to be doing good things. I mean, I, you know, I, I kind of cling, I guess, to, to John chapter 15, where if, if you abide in Christ, you know, you can't be plucked away or can't be cast away. You know, I, or you, if you don't produce fruit, you'll be you know, like a branch that's burnt, which that also is a little terrifying to me. I, how, how, how do you, how do you know that you're not part of the branches that are going to be burned or, or the, the practice practitioners of lawlessness that he discusses in Matthew 7? Yeah. So the, the first thing that I would point out is that Matthew chapter 7 is a warning against false prophets. That's the context of the passage. I mean, Jesus says, watch out for false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ferocious wolves. By their fruit, you recognize them. And then Jesus gives this illustration to people pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles. Likewise, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, and a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus, by their fruit, you will recognize them. Who are you recognizing by their fruit? The false teachers, the false prophets. You're recognizing them by their fruit. And then Jesus makes the statement that you uh, brought up in your question. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name drive out demons and perform many miracles? Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoers, or away from me, you workers of iniquity. I think in this passage, Jesus may well have in mind someone like Judas. Judas, who was in his inner circle, who looked like a sheep, but actually was a wolf in sheep's clothing. And by his fruit, he was eventually identified as what Jesus, through his sovereignty and his knowledge of Judas, was able to say, he is a devil. Because Judas was never there because he loved Jesus. Judas was there because he loved what was on the master's table. So he did all the things that the sheep would do. Uh, he, he did all the things that even a shepherd might do. He performed miracles. He drove out demons. He did these works. But again, his heart was not with the Lord. So the real question that I think we all need to ask ourselves in the immediate context, again, we're talking about false prophets, but we all have to ask ourselves, do we really love Jesus or is Jesus a means to our end? Do we really want to follow Jesus? Do we really want to live within the parameters that God sets forth for us to live within? Is he really our leader and our forgiver? Is he really our savior and our Lord? Well, if he is, you will continue on being a perpetuator of the kingdom. You will be a co-consummator of the kingdom, which is something that we're called to do. You will be part of the fellowship or communion of the saints. You will partake of the means of grace by which you become by grace what God is by nature, or as Peter puts it, by which you become a partaker, a participant in the divine nature, by which you have fellowship with God, by which you actually are 
what you were designed to be, one that is in union with God. So the real issue is never, well, golly, what's going to happen to me? Was my confession a proper... Con no, are you continuing on in your walk with the Lord? Are you partaking in the means of grace? Do you love the Lord Jesus Christ? Uh, do you want a relationship with him, not only for time, but also for eternity? Now, in saying all of that, I don't want to cast a great a deal of burden on anybody's shoulders, a burden that they cannot bear, because what I'm saying in essence is, what is the condition of your heart? Not, is your life perfect? Because every single one of us has, well, our own besetting sins. Every one of us continues to sin in thought, word, and deed. In fact, just before I came on the show today, in my prayer time, I always spend a little time in prayer before going on the show, and in my prayer time, I confessed my sins, knowing that he's faithful and just, will forgive my sins and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. So I don't come to him as someone perfect, but always as a needy sinner, asking him to forgive me of my sins, to cleanse me, and to continue to use me, not by might nor by power, but by his spirit. So if you love the Lord Jesus Christ, even though we are sinners and we continue to sin, sins of commission and omission. If you love the Lord Jesus Christ, you'll confess your sins and continue on that journey with the communion of saints. Yeah, I, I that, thank you very much. Um, yeah, it's just when you read things like that and you read Matthew 25 about the sheep and the goats, and you know, it's, it's, it's just very humbling. It is humbling. humbling. It is humbling, and that's why we are so grateful that we are saved by God's grace through faith on account of Jesus Christ. You know, the beautiful passage in Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 is followed by Ephesians 2, verse 10. So we are saved by God's grace through faith. And it is not by works so that any man can boast, as, as Paul puts it in Ephesians chapter 2. But those that are genuinely saved, they do the works of the Lord and certainly want to participate not only with Christ, but with uh, Christians, followers of Christ, uh, the community of saints that we are so privileged to be a part of. We're out of time for this edition of the Bible Answer Man broadcast. Uh, I'd like to go on, JT. I'm glad you called. Uh, re remember, the Lord loves you. He's not looking to throw obstacles in your path. Um, he, he, he wants a relationship with you. Uh, if you love him, he's not going to catch you on a technicality. Uh, love him, continue on in the faith, and do so within the community that he provides, the body of Christ.